All right, it is finally time for me to update you guys on the items I purchased during the Sephora sale. I went amp. I went absolutely bonkers. That's how I keep trying to say that. Why? Why? Oh my gosh. But really, I did go all out for the Sephora sale in the spring. I was super excited. I was like looking forward to it. I don't know. I was really into it this year. And so I have 20 products here. These are the things that I feel like I've tested the most. I know the most good and bad. And I thought I would do something different and I would rank them from worst to best. So I hope that will be kind of fun. I just thought that'd be a little bit of a twist, a little bit something spicy. I am not doing the full face like getting together with you but I will have some insert shots some swatches things like that as I am talking about products I'm not talking about every single item I bought like I said I went absolutely nuts though and I bought like way too much stuff but I hope this ranking helps and lets you know what I think is worth it what I think is mid what I think is not good to help you with your beauty decisions your beauty purchases so first off number 20 at the bottom of the ranking here I don't think this is gonna come as a surprise to you guys but this Gucci foundation I I'm sorry. <laughs> I want to like it. I want to be a bougie bitch and love this. I do. I'm not going to lie, but I don't like this. So this is the Eternity Debuté Foundation. I have the shade 160N and we're going to do a little experiment as this video goes on. I'm going to put some of this on my hand. My voice is just dead today. I am so sorry, but we're going to put some of this on my hand and we're going to let it dry throughout this video. And then I'll come back and put a fresh swatch and we'll really see the difference here because that is my my biggest issue with this foundation is that the color changes so much throughout the drying period. In my first try on of this, I put this on and I was like, okay, we're gonna make it work like, okay, okay. And just progressively throughout, I'm like, am I? Is it darker? Like I looked orange, it looked like a mask. It The color was definitely not working with me. So that is my first like really big issue with this. I know Angelica struggled with the same issue, but I also know people who love this foundation too. So I'm not sure if it's just like the lighter end of the spectrum here or what, but yeah, that just doesn't work for me. Maybe if you really wanna get technical with it, you could buy a shade, so many shades lighter. So that way by the time it dries down, it looks good. That's not something I'm trying to do. I just don't think that should be that much of an issue. I will say it makes me grateful for all the foundations that don't do that if this is like something that happens. I'm just so glad so many other foundations have made that work and figured that out. So that's a big issue with this, but also just for my style and preference, this is a pretty mattifying and full coverage foundation. So if you love that, you like that look, you might like this. Again, if you can get past the oxidation, if you can get past the color changing, if that's not an issue for you, it's just full on makeup. Like this makes me feel like I am completely changing my face. I am transforming. I am a different person, <laughs> a different person. Like when you wipe this off, you're going to be looking like a different person, which can be cool. Like, you know, sometimes you need that, but that's not really my overall everyday style. And that's what I was hoping this would be for me and how I would wear it, which is not what's going to happen. So uh, I've been mixing this. I've been trying to make it work. Like there are ways for me to make it work, but definitely not something I suggest personally, not something that worked for me. And when it comes to foundations it's so nice finding a foundation you can just squirt a little on the back of your hand you know put it on your face and get out the door you know what I mean like that's what I'm looking for for everyday staples and that's what I really enjoy overall so that one's a big fat note for me. I'm sorry. All right, so that was number 20. Number 19 is still a base product. Unfortunately, I'm like trying to branch out. I'm like trying to, you know, get out there, but I definitely had some duds this time. The Huda Beauty Glowish Concealer. This is the Bright Light Sheer Concealer. You know, it says it in the name. It says it's sheer, so there's a little on me for that, okay? There is a little bit on me because one of the things I don't like about it is that it's really sheer, but this is like really sheer. <laughs> like you kind of have to want a no makeup look but at that point it's just like do do you need the concealer maybe you don't even need the concealer just use like a brightener or corrector or something under your eyes at least for me that's how I found it also though I just felt like the texture of this was so off-putting it's almost like a gelatinous liquid and I know that sounds bizarre but that's what was happening under my eyes and so it's like a whipped creamy kind of consistency and so it feels emollient it feels like something's there but then it's not even giving you the coverage it looks a little greasy almost and I felt like it just creased and creased like I'm like how is there even product under my I don't even see the product and yet it's creasing under my eyeballs so this is just not one for me I definitely prefer my Dior this has been the one I've been going to lately and I love it I actually did a demo showing you this and I don't know if you're gonna be able to see on camera I honestly don't struggle a ton with dark 
under eyes, but I just love the way this looks. It looks skin-like, but it does give me coverage, but it doesn't look cakey, it doesn't look too much, especially when I just use a little dot of it. So, ooh, it's dirty. <laughs> it's very dirty. So I would just skip on the glowish. I just feel like use your foundation under your eyes a little, use a little brightener, like for me anyway. And I just don't think this plays well a ton with like powders, like it's just not for me, if you can't tell. And it makes me so sad. I've tried so much from the Glowish line and I've only liked the powder blushes. I actually really love the powder blushes, but other than that, I have really not loved anything else from the line. I keep wanting to wipe off this swatch, but we won't do it. Number 18 and still in the kind of like bad category, I have the Sephora Single Eyeshadows. I branched out, I decided to try some stuff from the Sephora like branded line. And I hate to say this, I really wanted to find something that was more inexpensive at Sephora that I could recommend, but I just don't like, I don't recommend these. And I don't know if it's just the shades I got, but I have the shade one in a million. And I also have the shade twinkle twinkle. And although these are fine, you can make them work. Both of them have a little bit of like hard pan. They're harder pressed. They do have like some sparkle to them, but I just feel like if you're on a budget, go with a ColourPop Super Shock. Okay. I have a video on my favorite Super Shocks. Go check that out. Save some money. They're going to be cheaper than these are. So if you're on a budget, that's what I suggest. If you're not on a budget, go with the moon dust shadows from urban decay go with an indie shadow go with like a cool indie brand they have so much sparkle so many fun duo chromes multi chromes things like that and these all have kind of that like sparkle going on so that's why i'm recommending that but like literally i just don't think you should go with these i'm sorry i just didn't love the way they went on my eyes i felt like they weren't super pigmented but they weren't just sparkles they just were lackluster to me and i personally don't suggest these ones Again, ColourPop Super Shocks if you're on a budget, and if you're not, there's tons of options. You got tons of options, girl. Don't, I wouldn't get these. I don't think you should get these. Number 16 on my list. I am heartbroken to say this, but it's the truth. The Benefit Cookie Highlighter. You guys, I was so excited to finally get this highlighter in my hands. This is everyone's favorite or was. And I think that's the key term here, was. Like, let's put some asterisks around that because I think that one of the reasons I'm not obsessed with this highlighter is because it does feel like an older formula, something that we would have loved and did love in 2017, 20. 18 even before that I don't know when it came out but I'm just saying it's just not quite 2020s and forward style and status to me personally okay I know a lot of you guys still love it but the reason I'm not obsessed with this is because it is too much like it is too shiny and too opaque and I can have one well really I'm fine with too shiny I just don't want the opaqueness the opaqueness is what I feel like gives you that tin man look what gives you that really artificial like stripe and I'm not into that look and I feel like this is just so hard to only put a little bit on because it becomes so opaque even in sheer amounts it's very blinding and kind of metallic looking and in some ways like in some lights you don't see it but in the other light it's just so opaque and so there and that's just not quite my style. I felt like this product always snuck up on me as well. Like I would put it on and be like, oh, nothing's really there. And then I'd add a little bit more and it was just like, no, no, why did I do that? So I just can't quite get this one to work for me personally at the moment. As an inner corner highlight, really pretty. I do like it on the nose. That's what I have on my nose today. And I think that looks really nice. But as for a cheekbone highlighter, it's just not really quite for me. Even though it's what I'm wearing today, I used a very big fluffy brush. I would was very cautious about just dipping it a little, dipping it on the back of my hand, kind of brushing off some of that product and really lightly sweeping it just so that I could get, again, the sheerest application possible so that I could avoid that metallic strip on my cheek. Oh, it just makes me so sad that this isn't for me, but I really don't love this one personally. I am into something shiny and again, sparkly, but I just don't want it that opaque in the base. And that was really my issue with this because it just makes it so hard to look even like extra glowy natural like you just can't really get that natural to go with this highlighter you are going to be shining from outer space and if that's what you like this is the one for you let me tell you it is intense to say the least okay realize the benefit was actually number 17 we're on 16 now this ranking is getting confusing i'm so sorry the armani blushes go in number 16 and these aren't necessarily like a bad product but i will say overall if i'm being honest i'm a little disappointed that i don't love these more especially because they 
are a luxury purchase. So I got two of the Luminous Silk Powder Blushes. I got the shade 50 and I also got this really pretty hot pink. This is in the shade 52. And if you wanna see me apply these, definitely go check out my latest blush video. I'll try to leave it linked down below, but I applied both of these on each of my cheeks so you could really see them in detail. When it comes to shade 50, this one, it has a little bit of a flip to it. So it kind of reminds me of NARS Orgasm in that it's like this pink undertone with a golden sheen on top. And the pink on this is actually uh, kind of cool toned. Like it goes more cool tone, but then the shine is like a warmer golden yellow kind of color. And it just doesn't really work with me and what I like. So that doesn't work for me color wise. And then when it comes to the pink, this is a pretty color, really easy to use if you're looking for a pink like this. It's not a scary pink because these are kind of sheer, buildable, like workable in that way. And I do love that. And that's like what's so oh, annoying about it because I really feel like I should like these, but maybe it's just the colors. When I apply this color, I just feel like it looks a little almost like dusty or ashy around the edges and I don't love that look. I mean I don't know anyone who's really loving that look right so they're not the worst product ever and again it just might be these colors that I picked but um, I really wanted to love these more maybe if there are more neutral tones maybe those would be really good but I just feel like they're okay there are so many other blushes out there that I think you should go with if you're going for powder so these ones are a no for me personally number 15 were a quarter through the lid and I have to put the Fenty Beauty Hella Thick Mascara in here. I was excited to try this. This is a newer launch from the brand. I'd seen lots of people like showing this off and so I was like, let's try it out. Let's see if this mascara is good. It's called the Hella Thick, so it's meant to be more volumizing and I do think it gives that volumizing. So if you're into that, I think you might like this. It really does coat my lashes well. What I found issues with with this is that I just so easily could go from like an okay lash to a clumpy lash in a way that I didn't love and then it was kind of hard to go back from that I felt like I couldn't really layer this not that I even needed to sometimes like enough product seriously like went on I was just trying to like work that out and like try to make it work from that so I just felt like it wasn't the most enjoyable experience although I felt like my lashes usually turned out fine like there was never a time that it was so bad I was like I need to take off my mascara so I definitely made it work for me I didn't like putting this on my lower lashes though because one it would transfer a little bit but also again that clumpiness and just kind of it's like a thick ink you know so I just felt like it was so easy to get everywhere even when I was applying this today I got it on my lower lashes I got it on my eyeball I know, but I got it literally like on my eyeball. I was like, what am I doing? This is definitely not a repurchase for me. I will finish it up for sure, but I would not repurchase this. And I'm kind of surprised too, because I do like the wand overall. It's like a natural bristle kind of cone shape. And I do think it gets in there, but it just looks like it's just thick. It's a thick boy. Hella thick. That is the correct term. So know what you're getting into with this. But if that's your style, you might really like it. Mascara is super personal. So, you know, what someone else loves, you might hate. What other people hate, you might love. That's just kind of how it goes. This one just wasn't it for me. But not the worst ever. Not something I need to like chuck into the trash, you know? And with that, we're kind of getting into this midsection. Like there's kind of a bottom part of the midsection into a higher part of the midsection. But all the stuff in here is solid overall like there's nothing necessarily wrong with these products it's going to be preference and there's so much just like good makeup out that it just made it into this kind of middle ground category for me instead of going into my top favorites so next this is the Pat McGrath bronzer I picked this up because it was a new launch like I wanted to know what it was about and so far I'm just like it's okay like it's solid I don't feel like I'm getting just butterflies in my stomach for it but at the same time like it's it's solid for me every time I use it I'm like okay nice and I think that's partially preference like I am into a slightly radiant bronzer right now like a baked bronzer that type of thing so you know this is just that standard matte formula which is fine and dandy and great and just again solid but I don't find myself like reaching for it salivating to use it any of that type of stuff it's just nice to me so that's why it goes in here 
I know, like kind of boring for me to say, but that's literally how I feel about it. I'm glad there are some bronzers now in the line because they were missing those for a long time, but it's not like my favorite bronzer formula for sure. And out of like new matte bronzers, I honestly feel like I like the House Labs one. I've been using more than that one. So that's another reason why this one's going so low in the ranking. All right, number 13, another one that kind of makes me sad it's this low. I really wanted this particular product to be so high up and be like a new fave, but the Makeup Forever single shadow that I ended up picking up, this is in the shade like taupe glitter something. I'll put it down below. And as much as I do like this, I've worn this multiple times, I feel like there's a few things that stop it from being like a favorite, like an everyday favorite. I feel like things that go in the favorites category are things that I'm like having to stop myself from reaching for and that I want to put on every day of my life. <laughs> you know, like things that I'm getting tons of wear out of that I feel really pretty in that I just feel like is creative, whatever it is. And this is just not a product I could wear every day. One, the color is just a little too dark for it to be an everyday eyeshadow for me. Every time I put this all over my lids, which is what I like to do, it just adds a little too much grunginess, a little too much smokiness for it to be an everyday. Like it just immediately takes it a little more sultry, a little more nighttime, which can be really pretty. And I find that this is one of those shadows that over the course of the night looks better on me. At least that's how I get into it. Like at first I put it on, I'm like, okay. But then later on, I'll look at myself in a mirror and be like, ooh, okay, smoky girl, love it. So that is part of this like it's not a love at first application and I think another reason for that is that this formula is another one of those older products like it's a new to me product but this is not a new product on the market and so I can tell in the formula of this that it's just an older type of formula it's a metallic not quite foiled metallic like it's not a wet shine look but it's definitely more of that metallic kind of full opacity with some glitter in it and then I just choose to wear it in a more sheer manner but a lot of the stuff that I'm more into kind of almost has like a sheerness built in and then you can build it up if you want to and then there's like a delicateness to that sparkle this is not a delicate shadow like this formula and some of those older metallic formulas if you know what I'm talking about they don't have a delicateness to them okay they're like a little more beefy they have a little more structure they're just a little more substantial you know so uh this one unfortunately isn't like a favorite it's not bad I'm not gonna get rid of it I don't like hate it but it just has a more specific use than what I was hoping because of the color and then also the finish and those things so I feel like between this and the cookie product it's hard because it almost makes me want to not try products that maybe I've already passed on in the past but also I've tried so many products that I love that are oldies so mm, that's a tough one it's definitely a tough one all right similar thing we have another eyeshadow the last eyeshadow I'm going to be mentioning in here and this is the big old Dominique Cosmetics Essential Palette I wanted to pick this up because I couldn't get it out of my mind when I saw that it launched even though it's just neutrals it's half matte and half shimmer I was drawn into the tones like I liked this kind of mauve -y shade this brown seemed just like every day same with this as well as the shimmers they just looked really pretty and so far like I think this is a solid palette I mean this is almost smack dab in the middle of my ranking for a reason I feel like every look I've created with this like even today's look I do end up really liking and I think looks beautiful but the formula of these shimmers is definitely a little bit different for me they're really hard pressed but they are more flaky they're not like a uh, straight up metallic so I like that they're flaky but because they're so hard pressed sometimes I'm a little thrown off by that it just is just a little bit different but by the time I get it on my eyes it always looks really stunning really beautiful the mattes blend really nicely I feel like it's a great everyday essential palette like it's named so today I put on the shade grateful which is kind of this purpley semi duochrome like it's a very neutral duochrome overall so I kind of just put that on with a brush because I really wanted a light application of it and then I put a little bit of pretty kind just tapped in the center and pretty kind is one of my favorite shades in here which I'm so surprised because I'm not usually into a lighter lid shade like that, at least not recently, but I guess I am because that's the one that I definitely wear the most out of here. So overall, I think it's like a solid, pretty neutral palette, but not one of my absolute top, top, top favorites, but not one I wouldn't recommend necessarily either, depending on who I was talking to, what they were looking for, that kind of thing. I was looking for it earlier and it's not even on the website anymore. And this is the only thing I think from Dominique Cosmetics even listed on the site. So I'm not sure if it's gonna be staying at Sephora 
in the first place but yeah glad I tried it because I love the cream blushes so much and I think this is good and solid it still goes number 11 all right next number 10 we're halfway through this is the makeup by Mario cream bronzer stick I got the shade light and I feel like this is an okay product again solid but it's not my favorite cream bronzer I love the NARS one you guys already know in the tub like in the kind of pot and this color wise looks great I like to apply it best with a brush so I'll take it off of the stick and then apply that way the reason I don't love going in with the stick is because this is a drier formula it's just not super creamy like it blinds it looks good but it's not one of those really 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 emollient really 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 creamy bronzers so I just find if I place it on I just have a harder time blending that out than if I just go in and then kind of blend as I'm applying that product and so when I do it that way I do really like it but this is just an extra step I just don't feel like I need especially it's not as enjoyable to use as some other cream products that I have or cream bronzer specifically if you're looking for something really emollient the persona cream bronzer is just like so so creamy and I think I'm used to something more like that but if if you have oily skin if you're looking for a really done up look you really want to go for it you really want to like have the full-on cream bronzer and add a powder bronzer you're doing a full-on look I do think this can be pretty or even if you're doing just this again it can look good but it's just not my preferred way so that's why I'm putting this number 10 it's solid but it's not an absolute love for me but definitely good for oily skin if you are finding things too creamy for you this might be one that has some longevity for you oh my gosh like I can't keep a ranking straight I can't keep a ranking shade that wasn't even number 10 this is number 10 forgive me forgive me I think it's gonna be so fun let's do a ranking <laughs> and a bitch can't even count to 20 okay here we go actually number 10 this is the makeup forever artist pencil I got the shade anywhere caffeine so excited to try this out because this is everyone's favorite like I'm aware of her walnut girly this has been my fave for forever but everyone loves anywhere caffeine so I was like mm, I'm gonna try that out like maybe this is actually like can you imagine something even better that would blow my mind and I'd love my life so much more if I could try this one anyway I I do like this but this color is a little bit deeper on me so I feel like my lips look a little more done up than they do with the wherever walnut this is just such an easy simple liner where I can just do something very very low-key it doesn't look like I really like lined my lips necessarily whereas when I use this I look like I have a lip liner on but it looks good like don't get me wrong this looks really good I love this lip liner formula so this is like a solidly great product it's just not you know it's not my top five because because there are some really good products at the top here. And I also listed it at number 10 because I do prefer Wherever Walnut. Like if I had to pick one, I'm gonna keep Wherever Walnut for sure, but I still do like this. I'm glad to have it in my collection. I think it will work for just different times, different looks, different occasions. And also as summer goes on, you know, I'm getting a little more tan and color is so relative. So this might kind of change over time too. So it's good to have. And if you're more of like a medium skin tone, I think this would be really good as opposed to Wherever Walnut. So yeah. I'm happy with it for sure, but I still do love my wear for walnut. All right, number nine, I double checked. This is the In Beauty Face Glaze. And I am sad because when I'm talking about this, like I put this so high because I know this is a good product. This feels so good. This is a highlighting gel cream and it looks so pretty on my skin. It also feels good. It's like moisturizing. It just has a nice feel to it. But unfortunately, the reason that I don't like love, love, love this is because I do get so much more oily throughout the day with it. When I wear this, I definitely can see my oils poking through more. So I just have to be more conscious about that. If I'm gonna wear it, I have to like make sure I'm powdering more. I try not to put it in the center of my face so that I don't show my pores off more, but it looks so good. Like this is such a beautiful sheen. It's definitely shiny and coming off like this pearlescent, but it doesn't look metallic. It doesn't go into benefit cookie territory. You know what I'm saying? It just looks great. And also again, feels good. It feels like skincare has the beautiful glow to it. I wish that it just worked for me more. I feel like the better version for oily skin is the First Aid Beauty Coconut Smoothie Primer. So if you want something like this, that one has a little less glow to it, but I find that even though it's lotiony, even though it's moisturizing, I don't get more oily with that one. So that's one to try if you're oily skin. If you have dry skin, this might be something to check out though. I really quite liked the way that it felt on my skin. No pilling, none of that. 
but so that was great but just a really beautiful glow looks great alone looks good under makeup just wish my makeup lasted longer because of my skin type so i know it's a good product i just know it's like damn it oily skin why <laughs> and that kind of gets us into the top products so these are all things that i think are really good pretty solid into like my fave fave faves so we're already into some good territory which i love to see number eight is the dior lip glow oil i bought this because it's viral i bought this because on instagram everyone has this thing everyone's showing it putting it on their vanity like i'm like okay i'll get it too like <laughs> i want to try that and it's nice okay i think it's a solid product is it my favorite favorite lip oil ever or lip product ever no i don't think it's my favorite but it's up there like it's good it's solid it's not just cute for the packaging okay i did a video showing some dupes and i felt like i didn't want to say this but i do feel like the next one the fat oil on my lips it's hard to distinguish a difference not only in color but also in texture <laughs> I don't know why that is because on its own I really don't like the lip oil from NYX I really don't like that product and I'm sitting here saying I like this one so tell me how that works I don't even know but if you're looking for a dupe or you just don't want to spend the money maybe check that one out is what I'm trying to say or check that video out and you can make your decision but overall I'm happy with this product it gives a nice glassy look on the lips it's not too thick where it's like goopy but it's also not too thin it feels hydrating it feels plush on my lips it has a little bit of a minty thing so this tiny bit of plumping happens but I really love it and it has a tiny bit of pH really not much though this one doesn't have much we'll get into one that I really like even a little bit better than this one if you're looking for just formula and don't want the Dior name don't care about that but if you are thinking about this product specifically you really want it I think it's good I think that it's not just hype I think it's actually a good product so that's my number eight and I feel like with that we're getting into things I just strongly recommend if you're thinking about it I like it I like this shit okay this is stuff I'm using for reaching for all of that this is the super group glow screen I had the mini of this, but I decided to pick up the full size and I have been loving this. I at first thought, oh, I don't know if I like it under makeup, but I've been wearing it under makeup different days and it looks good. Like, I don't know what I was talking about. I figured it out at least. I love this. I always feel so tan and healthy. When I put this on, I go for a walk. Even Sam will be like, ooh, okay, <laughs> looking good. So I love this, especially if you're looking for a no foundation, you don't want to put foundation on. I think this is a great way to go tinted while still getting your sun protection still getting a glow it is very glowy I will say if you're like not into the glow sometimes this gets a little intense sometimes I even set it with a powder just to kind of beat back some of that shine but overall I love it I just feel like it's vacation vibes it's summer vibes it's what I'm feeling it's what I'm channeling it's what I'm manifesting for my life this summer so I've really loved this you can tell like I've been using the shit out of this I finally tried the rose ink cream blushes and I am very into them you guys have been suggesting them for forever and I agree with you they are so good this is number seven on my list because I just think the line itself like color wise has some nice neutrals like they look boring they look like they're all gonna be really similar but to be honest it's like what I like like let's get real the shade I picked up initially if that tells you anything this is Delphine and this was actually in like a set from Sephora I wish I knew that because it was such a great value this alone retails I think for like 30 or so like it's kind of expensive but with the set it had all this other stuff in it and you were paying barely any more and you got a full size like it was such a good deal but this color is stunning Delphine is so pretty today I'm wearing the shade Daylily one of you guys recommended this color specifically and it is just so perfect right like <laughs> it's so perfect for me I love this kind of terracotta a little bit more burnt a little more rosy kind of shade especially right now it has a little more life to it but this is a thicker cream so it definitely has some body to it the color goes on nicely though where it's pigmented but not too much you don't have to be too scared it leaves a little bit of a glow but it's not too thin and serumy and like greasy and I really love that about it it's just such an easy cream blush I'm telling you if you are getting into cream blushes I feel like this could work for dry skin or oily skin combo skin really a great cream blush for all honestly I'm like into it just definitely a happy pickup and I'm so glad that something finally worked for me from Rose Inc because I've tried a couple different products now and this is the thing I love the most for sure and I should have started with this like this is the tried and true product I feel like that everyone loves so definitely a good one these are clean though I just hope they last we'll see how long these actually last that is something that I'm like please stay okay for a while please <laughs> we have a skincare item in here this I actually purchased off of a sample so I knew that I liked it enough to want to get the full size when I ran through the sample this is from youth to the people it's the triple peptide and cactus oasis serum I'm 
like halfway done with this. I've been just absolutely loving it. This is such a great moisturizing first step. So a lot of the time, if I'm getting out of the shower and my face is still even a little bit wet, I'll put two pumps of this on and just kind of put it all down my neck, like on my chest a little, and just really rub it in. It's like a very, very thin watery consistency. It's like almost water, seriously. But it's such a drink for my skin. It really like just moisturizes everything. It feels nice and lightweight though. I don't have to worry about being greasy. And I feel like especially in the summer, I love that my skin can feel hydrated and can get that water and like moisture without being greasy. So I love it for that. Even sometimes if I'm not getting out of the shower, when I wash my face, I'll spray my face down with a little bit of a mist. And as that's drying, I'll apply this and then I'll go in with whatever other skincare I'm going in with. So loving this. The only thing I don't love is the packaging. I don't know if I would prefer actually a dropper because that's kind of annoying to me too, but the pump on this is just a little bit cumbersome. With the actual texture of this product, it's just a little bit thin and it kind of squirts everywhere. It definitely doesn't feel super nice, especially considering it's not cheap, but overall actual product, loving it, loving it. It is very similar and I use it very similarly to the Peach and Lily though. So if you have that glass skin uh, serum, that one's really good too. And that one goes on sale, I feel like more. So if you can snag that for a deal, that's a good one as well. All right, number four, the House Labs Triclone Foundation. I've been loving this, you guys. I don't know if it's partially that it just matches my skin really nice, but it is the foundation I'm wearing today. I have loved it. Oh, I haven't been shaking it. Yikes, that's maybe not good. I haven't had an issue, but dang it. Oh my gosh. Anyway, it took me a while to try this. I think I, I don't know. I thought it was gonna be too glowy, not for me, whatever. And I do get a little oily with this. I'm not gonna lie. Maybe not the absolute best for oily skin, but I just think that it looks so nice on my skin. I want it to work. So it's like, let's powder it down. I don't know, we'll figure it out because this looks so skin-like on. It's so easy to blend out. Today I put it on over a couple different primers and it's just so easy. I even used a brush, which sometimes that can get a little dicey, but it applied really nice again, really skin-like, uh, a little bit of glow coming off of it, and I'm so into it. If you have combo skin and like something a little bit glowy and skin-like, or if you have dry skin, I think this would work out so well. It feels luxe, it's just nice. Like, I'm like, okay, there's some good foundations out there, man. It is a little bit thin, and my favorite way to apply it is just one pump. I feel like what happens is the first time I ever try foundation, I put way too much of it on, just trying to build up coverage and then I always go back and figure out how I can make one pump of something work or like the equivalent of one pump work and so from that one pump I will disperse it onto my face using like the finger method I know you've seen it and so that just helps me get enough product kind of overall on my face so I don't just like get fixated and put one pump on half my face and I feel like that really helps just get an even coverage and just helps me get some of this on but I love the coverage even this it's like a medium to me even though it feels so lightweight it looks so thin it's just a really good one if you're looking for a foundation this has so many different shades I would check this one out for sure okay number three this is the merit lip slick how the hell did this get in my number three I don't know I don't even know you guys <laughs> but if I'm thinking about how much I've used this product how much it's been with me I can't lie this merit shade slick gelé tinted lip oil this is in the shade jeté I've really loved it this is the new one so these have a little bit of a ph thing going on and I've talked shit about ph stuff okay I get it I've talked about how it's just like it's not new it's kind of like everything turns hot pink and yes it does but I feel like this is one of the best ways I've seen it done where it's actually tinting your lips but it's not too much so if you don't want like a hot pink lip but you kind of like a little bit of life given to your lips from that I really think you should check this one out it was what I was wearing at the beginning of the video before I put on the Dior one but I'll put it on again I think I also have videos of me putting it on but I love carrying this with me throughout the day because it's just so easy to apply and it actually gives my lips a little bit of life which sometimes I need and I feel like the pink oh I'm like really pink right now I think that Dior one also added and whatever but I feel like the pink it gives is just this perfect amount where I don't feel like self-conscious about it but it's actually there as well like it is definitely happening the feeling of this lip oil is thinner than the Dior so that one has a little bit more of a, a thicker kind of coating without being really sticky but I feel like I'm always nervous this is just just gonna go a little too thin but when I actually have it on I'm like no it feels nice it feels cushiony has a silkiness to it without feeling greasy which I love the only thing I wish the doe foot was bigger this little doe foot kind of feels a little awkward like I wish it was larger or something like 
I don't know. That's like the thing that throws me off, if anything, from this product, but I absolutely love it. I've been wearing it so much. I've been bringing it with me. I just think it's great. So an unexpectedly really great pickup for me, honestly. All right, we're on number two, you guys, and I'm probably gonna demo this just live. Like, let's do it live. But number two, the Fenty Diamond Balm. Tell me why it took me so long. Like, so many of my friends love this. This is like a staple product. Like, people have talked about this. This is not new. And this is one of the things where I'm like, well, if I don't try old products, then how would this come into my life? Because I absolutely love this. If you guys don't know what this is, it's like that putty uh, highlighter from Fenty. So you can like push on it a little. It's kind of like a cream, but it gives this like wet shine look. And specifically, I have the shade Diamond Balm here, which is like that really glassy look. So we're gonna put it on my eyes today. Maybe I'll add a little to my cheeks. I don't know, because I love this on my freaking eyes. I top this over like everything lately. Um, So here we go. Go. Oh, it is just so pretty. If you just are like, I love sparkle, but I don't need it to be too much. Like I don't need a bunch of different colors. This is just like kind of a universal sparkle and it's stunning. There we go. Just a little, just enough. I feel like what I had underneath is already so sparkly though. Kind of hard to tell. Let's put it on a little here. I love the wet shine that this gives. I think it looks so good on the face. It looks so good on the eyes. It looks good wherever you're gonna freaking put it. Just stunning. I wish that I had tried this earlier. I know that there are a lot of products like this. Lottie London has a dupe. Like there's a lot of stuff that does something similar to this, but I am so glad I actually tried the Fenty one at this point finally, because it is so good. Definitely something I can see myself bringing with me when I travel just to have this. Like I just want it next to me so that if something's not giving enough, I can add this, you know? It's just a great topper, a great kind of, mm, what's one more thing I could do? Oh yeah, let's top that. Let's tap that, you know what I mean? <laughs> no, I love this. I'm so glad this is finally in my collection. All right, and finally, last, the number one product that I picked up, the thing I'm most happy with, the thing I'm so excited about, the thing that I feel like I've reached for the most, that I love the most, that I just feel like is the most me, all of it, it's the Kosas bronzer. And I'm so happy to say that because I took a risk buying this on the relaunch because I had the original bronzer and I had such a love-hate relationship with it. I love that it was a big, glowy bronzer but I didn't love the color all the time sometimes that felt a little bit off and it would get hard pan and it eventually started smelling I think that this will probably at some point start smelling but I feel like they have gotten rid of the hard pan issues I have not had any issues with hard pan so <gasps> that makes me so happy I don't want to jinx it I do not want to jinx it but <laughs> that does make me so happy and also color I've not had issues with color on this and I do feel like it's different I think they did change the colors up so that makes me so so happy Happy, but I just adore this. This is the way I like to do bronzer if I'm gonna go with a powder This is so easy to do and that's what I love about it I've been using it most with this Jones Road Beauty bronzer brush. I just really have been loving this big old brush I just swirl it in here really just go in on my cheeks on my forehead under my chin on my neck If I need to like wherever I need a bronze it looks so natural it looks so beautiful I love the little bit of radiance that it gives because I think again that makes it look just like that bronze vacation That's the vibe. I want you guys if you can't tell like I've told you already but let me tell you again that's what I'm into and I feel like this just looks beautiful it's just like an everyday for sure kind of product for me I'm in love I'm so happy that it's good I'm so happy it doesn't suck and I really hope it doesn't turn on me too fast so fingers crossed about that but I really have been getting just so much use out of it that um, I feel like it's worth it like I love it I think it's so good can we get more baked bronzers please thank you that's what I want I want everyone to have a baked bronzer and I'd give those a try because this is just my vibe this is what I want. So, all right, guys. Well, that's my ranking. Before we leave it off, I thought we'd check in on the foundation swatch. Let's see how it went. This thing barely has dried. Also, I want to let you know. Like, I know it was thick, but it's still, like, tacky. All right. And here's the proof. Look, that's what it looks like when you're putting it on. This is what it looks like when it's actually dried down. It's very different. It's just a little thick. Not my thing, as we as we know. Okay, but I'll leave the Gucci foundation alone for now. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I'd love to know what you picked up during the sale now that it's been some time if you bought anything. What do you think of it now? If you tried anything that I talked about, do you like it? Do you not? Do you agree with my ranking? Let me know. Thank you guys so much for being here. I really hope you enjoyed the video. I hope it was helpful. If you were looking at some of these items, at least giving you my thoughts, my opinions. But other than that, I'm gonna leave it here. Thank you guys so, so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.